Let's learn to use the AWS Instance Scheduler. You can use it to schedule non-essential EC2 and RDS DB instances and save on your cloud costs. A CloudWatch event triggers a Lambda function at a set frequency. The function then checks the current state of the tagged instance against the schedule that you have stored in the DynamoDB table. It then performs a start or stop action depending on what is required. Using the instance scheduler consists of three steps. First, launch the CloudFormation template to set up the resources that are required. Second, set the period and schedule in the DynamoDB table. And third, use the predefined tag on the resources that you want to schedule. Open the instance scheduler page and click here to launch the CloudFormation stack. Click next to open the CloudFormation template from the S3 bucket. Enter a name for the stack. Schedule is the tag we will be using on instances that we want to schedule. Choose to schedule EC2, RDSDB instances or both. Ensure that scheduling is enabled. Leave the region blank to schedule in the present region. Pick the default time zone for the schedule. Here we choose Asia slash Kolkata to work on Indian Standard Time. Set the frequency at which the CloudWatch event triggers the Lambda function. A larger memory size is used for more instances. You can enable CloudWatch metrics to store scheduling data. Set the tags that will be applied when the instances are started or stopped. Set a tag for the CloudFormation stack. Pick a role for the stack to use. Here we leave it blank to use the present user's policies. You can choose to receive stack notifications via SNS. Review the chosen configuration for the stack. Acknowledge the IAM policies that the stack has access to and create the stack. After the stack has been created, we open the DynamoDB table with the config details. State table stores the present state of all scheduled instances. Config table stores all the period and schedule data. Here we see all the name and tag details for the scheduler we use. A period stores the time for which the schedule runs. Here, the office hours period lasts from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. A schedule shows how the period is deployed. The UK office hours schedule deploys the office hours period in London time. We now duplicate the UK office hour schedule to create one for Bangalore office hours. Copy the schedule name and use it to tag the instances. Change the time zone to Asia slash Kolkata for India time.
we now choose the instances we want to affect. Tag them with the key name as schedule and the value as BLR office hours. The tagged instances will be stopped and started according to schedule. When the office hours begin, the instances are running and the started tags have been applied. When office hours end, the instances are stopped and the stopped tags are applied. Some of the useful next features for the instance scheduler could be the ability to schedule other resources such as auto scaling groups, redshift clusters, Neptune databases or EKS clusters. Secondly, getting recommendations on which resources schedule and when so that we can maximize our cloud build savings. And third, the ability to bring up resources from outside. This means that we can use a URL that can be triggered by any external application so that we can carry out actions on the scheduler without logging into the console. Our next video will be out soon, where we learn how to increase the capabilities of the instant scheduler. Use the link to stay subscribed. Thank you for joining in. Let us know your biggest cloud use cases and we can work together on solving them.